Hi guys, how's it going? Weekend. So we're going to be looking at a new game today, and this one is called World of Contraption. I know next to nothing about it, but it looks interesting enough. It kind of looks a little bit like Besiege, if you've ever played Besiege. I have not, so this is going to be totally new for me. So we'll just jump in and we'll go look at the tutorial. It's the best place to start. Kind of give everybody an introduction to the game. Welcome to the World of Contraptions tutorial. Here we will learn the basics to build and pilot a contraption. To advance the tutorial, click on the button indicated by the red arrow. If you get lost, use the arrows below to get back a few steps or click on the button indicated to reset the tutorial. Okay. The game basic objective is to carry the companion block from the level beginning to the red target area. So I guess this here is our little companion block. Awesome little thing. Let's start with the camera controls. To rotate the camera, hold the right mouse button and move the mouse. Whee! Easy. We can also pan and stuff. And zoom obviously happens with the scroll wheel. They'll tell us that though. So move the camera up and down, left and right. Hold the middle mouse button and move in set directions. That's easy enough too. Move in, scrolling in, or zoom out, scrolling out. The camera can be moved forwards, backwards, left or right using the WASD, Q, and E. If you hold shift, the movement will be faster. Ooh, a lot faster. To reset the camera position, smash the spacebar. Awesome tricks. The contraption is built inside the delimitation zone. All blocks must be contained within the boundaries of the area. It is represented by the walls of the white dotted line. The first step to build the contraption is to add the first block. It can be added anywhere within the delimitation zone. The block height can be adjusted by holding left alt and scroll the mouse wheel. Ooh, awesome. So if we go to place our block, oh, it really can. And we've got a number that tells us how high it is. I don't know if that's feet, inches, meters, miles, what. Let's place the first block. Adjust the block height to one unit and position it in the center of the delimitation zone. Press the left mouse button to place the block. Bosh. Now the new blocks will be placed relative to the block already added. The green square drawn on the blocks already placed indicates the connection point where you can place new block. It is also possible to change the grid size of the connection points using the plus or minus keys or using the indicating buttons. For this tutorial, we'll leave the grid size at one. So let's have a look at that then, okay? So if we zoom in. So yeah, so it has one big snappy thing in the middle. And if we press plus, oh, we get loads. Ah, I see. Press left mouse button. On the connection point, we'll add a new block, fixing it to the block highlighted in green. Add the remaining blocks to form the structure of the image below. That's a total of five blocks. Three, four, five. Three checkers. If you have placed any blocks in the wrong position, you can delete them using X or backspace. So if we go over it and press X, yeah. Coolio. You can undo the last action by clicking on the indicated location. Return. Or by pressing Ctrl and Z. It is also possible to redo the undone action by pressing Ctrl and Y. So Ctrl and Z does that. And Ctrl and Y puts it back. It's the same with the two rotation arrows at the top. Easy peasy, lemon squash. When a block is added, the camera will automatically focus on that block. The camera's focus can be modified by clicking with the middle mouse button over a block. The camera will focus on the block. And if the block moves, the camera will follow it. So I'll just, yeah, click in the middle mouse wheel. Awesome tricks. It's also possible to disable autofocus when new blocks are added by pressing the autofocus button. Cool story. In the already placed blocks, the green highlighted ones indicate that the new block will be placed by fixing it in this block. Those highlighted in yellow indicate the blocks that are fixed in the green highlighted one. Okay. So basically, if I go to put that one up there, these two yellow ones are connected to the middle green one. At the bottom of the screen is a quick inventory bar where you can change the block type. This can be done by clicking on the desired block or using the number keys corresponding to that indicated in the block slot. So I'm just gonna press number three and I should get a wheel. Yeah, there we go. Bosh, easy peasy. Select the block indicated by press number two. Cool. Add these blocks to form the structure of the image above. Cool. Now with the contraption skeleton ready, let's add the wheels. Select the wheels, press three, and it's gonna put them on the side, isn't it? Now add the wheels to form the image above. Helps if you get it in the right place, cool. With the wheels added, we need to add a motor to rotate it. Select the slot for the motor block in the quick inventory or press number four. Bosh, okay, now we're gonna place it. Place it in the back. Add the motor in the position shown in the image. Well, if the orientation is not correct, use Q or E to rotate the block relative to the connection point. 
Yeah, that's cool. It's got a small rotation adjustment, so it's not too wild. With the motor added, we now have to define which wheels the motor will control to do so. Switch from the build mode to the transmission mode on the button indicated. It's the little gears up here. Okay. Transition mode, you can connect the motor to the axis and define the axis settings. The axis are represented by the yellow gears. Click on the axis stand, hold down, drag to the motor. When releasing on top of the motor, this axis will be connected to the motor. Do the same for the other axis as shown in the video. So we're going to take the two bottom ones. So you can also go from the motor to the axis as well. Awesome. It is also possible to drag from the motor to the axis to connect it. The number of axes that motor can control varies from motor to motor. When selecting a motor by clicking on it, it is shown how many axes the motor can control. And it is also possible to disconnect all axes from this motor. Really? Okay. Ah, I see. And then we just drag and drag. Nice. With the axis connected to motor, select the axis on the right side of the contraption by clicking on it to configure its behavior. So we'll click U. In the properties window, select continuous spin. Continuous spin. Wow. In this mode, the axis will rotate continuously when a configurable key is pressed. In the continuous spin properties, it is possible to change the activation keys for the rotation direction. For this tutorial, let's leave it out. Now select the axis on the left and again, continuous spin. Ah, it's going the wrong direction. This will be fun, so obviously. After selecting the axis to continue spin, arrows will appear in the yellow gears. These arrows indicate the axis rotation direction. Now that the axis on the left side has its rotation direction wrong, to correct this, select it and in the properties, select invert rotation. Bosh. So it's now going the same way. Awesome. If all is right, it should look like the video above, where they're both spin in the same way. They're both spin the same way. Yep, we're good. We cannot forget to add a companion block. This is the block that must be taken to the target area to complete the level. Return to the build mode by clicking the indicator above or press escape. Select the companion block or press five and place it in the position indicated by the image above. So that is in the middle on that one. Yay. There can only be one companion block and it is mandatory to play the level. In the inventory, it is identified with the heart icon in the lower right of its slot. Oh. Finally, we adjust the position of the contraption. To do so, click on the button indicated or press M. Three arrows appear in the center of your contraption. By clicking, holding, and dragging the mouse on any of these arrows, the contraption will move on the axis of the arrow. Select the vertical axis, green, and move the contraption down to stay close to ground as shown in the video. Okay, so once you go down, once the contraption hits the ground, the arrows will move, but the contraption won't. The contraption must be ready to complete this level. To play the level, press P or click on the play button indicated. Hello. So you do have to use the arrow keys. Using WASD just moves the camera. So arrow keys are what you're looking at. Before you drive your contraption, let's just adjust the camera focus. Clicking with the middle mouse on any block, the camera will focus on that block. And if the block moves, the camera will follow it. So. Yeah, so if I put the button on the companion block, it will stay there if I go to the other way. There you go. So if I click on the companion block, the button will follow it there. And the camera just kind of chills where it is. Awesome. If you lose sight of your contraption, clicking on the button here, indicate that the camera will automatically focus on the companion block. Okay, cool. Finally, we will pilot the contraption. Press the forwards arrow to move forwards. Use the back arrow to break or even reverse direction. Move the contraption to the target area when the companion block is inside. Wait three seconds to complete the level and this tutorial. Nice. That was pretty easy. Tutorial basics level two. Now that you learn the basics of the game, let's delve a little more. For this, we will make some improvements on our contraption. You can't improve on perfection. Let's start by repositioning the companion block by placing it in the center of the contraption skeleton. To do this, delete it and the block just below it. So if we go onto these two and we press backspace, we'll delete that and that one, leaving it as the image is shown. Place the companion block in the gap between the two blocks using the left mouse button to place it as shown in the video. So we want both of these to turn yellow. Is that what I did? Yeah, there we go. If you notice the companion block automatically fixed itself with the opposite block of the block you clicked on, this happens because the option to connect blocks automatically is enabled. This option makes the newly added block to automatically connect to all the blocks that are very close to it. This option can be disabled on the button indicated for a better control over which blocks connect with which ones on your contraption. Before proceeding, disable this option so the block will only fix to the one in which you click on. Ooh. Now let's reposition the motor to use an X or backspace to delete the motor and the block below, leaving it the same as the image above. Select the motor by clicking on the indicate slot. Press V or click the button indicate to open the block visualization window. In this window, it is possible to choose the pivot point of the block. Interesting. 
In this window, the camera control works the same way. Right mouse button to rotate, middle mouse button to move, and the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. To select the pivot point, click the left mouse button on the desired connection point. For this tutorial, set the pivot point shown in the image. So that is that one close the whole thing by pressing the little cross or escape place the motor in the position as shown in the image Ooh. okay cool if you notice the motor is not connected to the wheel supports this happened because we disabled the option to connect the blocks automatically to connect the motor to the supports manually we will use the adjacent block connection tool with the mouse over the motor click and hold the left mouse button Hold and drag the adjacent block that is not connected, releasing the mouse. So go there and release. The block will be connected. Do the same for the adjacent block on the opposite side. So we click here and hold and we drag and it's now all connected, yeah? Yes. When using the adjacent block connection tool, it's possible to connect any block that is touching the selected block. If it is not possible, the block will be highlighted in red and the ones that are already connected will be highlighted in yellow. The example is to demonstrate the use of the adjacent block connection tool. Click the button indicated to enable it automatically. As the motor has been deleted and replaced, it is necessary to redo the connections with the axis as well. Enter the transmission. Click in the indicator above. It's going to talk us through how to do it again, isn't it? Yep, click and hold the motor drag to the various axes ah because the axes haven't been changed we will not need to kind of re-edit all of this so this should be as it was which it is that's pretty cool the next steps require two new blocks that are not in the quick inventory bar to find it click on the indicated button and press i to open them that's our inventory oh nice the inventory window are all the blocks the game separate by categories you can click on the block slots to display its information for this tutorial we need the blocks steerable block and camera block select the util tool and category is shown by the arrow locate and click on the steerable block shown in the image oh that's that big boy there to add it to the quick inventory click on it and hold it and drag the mouse to the quick inventory bar you can add it in any position for this tutorial add it to the right side of the wheel as shown oh wow it just opens up a new slot for it that's pretty cool now let's get the camera block it's in the same category located and uh, select the single support camera now let's add the blocks to drive the contraption but first let's delete the front wheels and their respective supports so we're going to delete that 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 and that select the steerable block indicating the select place two blocks so it looks like the image Audio. Place two blocks to look like the image above. Pay attention to the orientation of the green arrows on the block. Use Q and E to rotate. We cannot forget to add the wheels. As at this level, the contraption will change the direction. In order to you do not have to reposition the camera. Oh my god. Okay, so this is a bit clunky with the English. Let's add the camera block. This block creates a camera that will be fixed at the position where the block is placed. Select the camera block. Awesome. Place the camera block as shown in the image. Pay attention to the orientation of the block they put it on there so does it yeah it's got a little green arrow coming out the front you can't really see it too well but it, it is there there you go look so we'll bang that on there traps is almost complete before playing the level let's take a look at the properties menu this mode you can change some special properties that some blocks have for example select one of the steerable blocks in this type of block it's possible to change its activation keys invert its direction or make it spin free like a hinge for this tutorial leave them as they are select the camera block it's possible to change the activation key and the camera type in the combo box leave the activation key as it is and select the fixed third in the combo box so it's shown traction is ready press p and play the level so if we press v left right oh those wheels are interesting when we go forwards and backwards you see how they kind of pivot in a bit we press v oh wow that's pretty cool and then we're over wait for three seconds bada big now you know the basics you start playing and then complete the first levels if you want to know more features do the next tutorial or look at the completed manual advanced tutorial what are they going to show us in this advanced tutorial then block group editing tool this is the last tutorial we will see the other features of the world of contraptions suppose we want to increase the length of our contraption the hard way will be to delete back or front part and redo it later in a longer length. To achieve the same result in an easier way, we use the block group editing tool. By holding left shift and hovering the mouse over the blocks, all the blocks will be highlighted in green, meaning this is the group of blocks where all the blocks are interconnected. 
The interconnected blocks are, are all blocks that are connected by one or more fixed axes connections between them. As the contraption is all interconnected, before proceeding, we have to separate it into two halves. For this, we will use the adjacent block connection tool where it's possible to remove connections individually. With the mouse over the companion block, press and hold the left mouse button, drag to one of the adjacent blocks, highlighted yellow, and press the X to remove the connection. Okay, so press and hold, move over here, and press X. So I've still got my finger on the button, I haven't clicked anything. Yes, there we go. Now the contraption is divided into two groups. By holding shift and hovering the mouse over the blocks, you will notice that the two groups. Still holding left shift, and with the mouse on the front group, press C to copy the group to clipboard. Okay, so we're over here. Not click the mouse yet. Okay, cool. The little clipboard has come up down here. The clipboard area is an extra inventory slot where blocks and groups go when copied. In this area, there are temporary slots that hold the last six blocks or groups that were copied. Okay. Now that the front group is copied, it can be removed. To do this, hold left shift and press X. So we're holding shift again, not click no mouse buttons and just press X. Awesome. To position the copied group, we first select the pivot point, press V and select the point shown in the image below. Um, what? So yeah, okay, so I highlighted over it and then I pressed V. So we want to move the pivot point to here. Place it in the original position, it was in, use Q or E to adjust the rotation and use left alt and the middle mouse button to adjust the distance. Wait, what? Okay, so with this clicked with the mouse, we move over here, we hold alt and we're scrolling forwards. Okay, set the distance to one unit and click the left mouse button to place. Now join the two parts showing the image of indicated blocks. So it's just literally blocks, okay. As the contraption is longer, it becomes a bit more fragile. Let's improve this by using the expandable bar block to strengthen its structures. Select the expandable bar in the indicator slot. With this block, it is possible to create a variable length bar between two points. In the inventory slot, this type of block is identified with an icon in the lower right corner. To use the bar, click and release the left mouse button at the first point, and then click and release the second point shown in the video. So we click and release, and then we go all the way over here and click and release. Simple. Do the same on both sides. Just obtain the same result as the image above. Done. The next step, we will explore the axis connections the same used on the wheel. In addition to the wheels, any block can be connected to an axis. Before proceeding, select the block indicated in slot 2 and place it in the position as shown above. Here you are, that one. Now set the block indicated in slot 3. Instead of placing it in a fixed way, press and hold C. If you notice, the pivot point will change to a cylinder, indicating that this connection will be in the axis. So that would just be normal. And then if we hold... Uh, okay, a tiny little, you see how this, like literally right on the mouse point, it's kind of square, and if I press C, it kind of goes to rotation. Interesting. Release C. To return to the fixed connection mode, select the block identified in slot 7, place it in the position shown. This is a blade. Okay. The next step is to add a motor to control the axis. Select it in its indicated slot 6, place it as shown in the image. If the axis connected is not connected to any motor, it will spin freely. So we want the motor, and that's on top of the companion block when it's facing that way. Now enter the transmission mode on the indication button and connect the axis to the motor by clicking and dragging between them as shown. Select the axis by clicking on it. In the properties window, select continuous spin, and continuous spin the axis will rotate at the maximum speed continuously while holding the activation key. Still in the properties window, we will change the activation keys to not match the wheel keys. That makes sense. Select forwards key and press N and backwards key press M. Now click play and test this type configuration using the N and M keys and return to the build mode, press escape. So we are now in this. So if we press M and N, that's a bit lethal. So if we press escape, Go back to the build menu. Okay, cool. Switch back to the transmission mode, select the axis and clicking on change spin type. And this one, choose steerable spin. Ay ay ay. In the steerable spin, the axis will rotate from the rest point to a configurable angle by pressing and holding the activation key. In the properties window, let's change the activation keys. Select forwards, press N and backwards and press M. You can also change the target angle, but for this example, let's leave it as it is. Now click play and test this type again. So we go M and N. So they only go so far this time, it's like the wheels turning. 
Switching back to transmission mode again. Select the axis and click on change spin type. And this time, choose the last option stepper spin. In a stepper spin axis, rotate at a specific low speed while holding the activation key. In the properties window, let's change the forwards and backwards again. So we're going to go change the forwards and backwards again. It's also possible to change the speed of the step. But for this example, let's leave it as it is. Now click play and try this again. Okay, so this is going to be N. Okay, so it only spins around one rotation, it won't go any further. So you've got to go back in the other direction. Yeah. Don't really see the point of that yet, but you know. We've come to the end of this tutorial. Now you know all the main features of this game. If you have forgotten something while playing, you can sort the complete manual at any time by clicking the button indicated. There, there is no button indicated. Ah, there we go. Awesome. So if we click play, we can drive to the end of this menu now, right? Oh dear. It does help if you slow down before you get to the to the circle. It doesn't slow down very well. Shazam. Awesome. So that was the walk through the tutorials, peeps. It's got a lot to go for this game. I quite like it already. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll go through the campaign missions later. Cheers, guys. See you next time. Bye for now.